thanks everyone. I'm really happy to be here. Uh, I will be talking about collaborations and uh, the importance of coalitions, um, particularly during this time of COVID and in the food as medicine uh, arena. I'll, I'll be providing a little background on food as medicine, uh, information about the Cal CalFIMIC Coalition, Project Open Hand, and medically tailored meals, and the importance of partnerships. And to start with, uh, as a little background on Project Open Hand in San Francisco, I think the, the origin of our organization is really one of the greatest examples of how partnerships can be effective in community. And just to provide a quick summary of how we started, uh, there are several organizations around the country that started during our last major public health pandemic 35 years ago during the HIV AIDS outbreak. Project Open Hand is one of those organizations. There was a community member 35 years ago who was a retired food service employee who noticed a young man in her, in her community literally starving to death due to the effect of HIV and AIDS. She, in her own house, prepared meals for this individual. And when the rest of the community, many members of the community saw what she was doing, they said, can we help? She started producing a large number of meals out of her own house, distributing to people in the community who were dealing with HIV and AIDS. And, and shortly thereafter, the community responded by providing a, um, a commercial kitchen and a church for her to expand her efforts. So I, I share this with you all, too, because I think there's three important points about a collaborative and an effective coalition that we can learn from, from our experience 35 years later, that there was a significant public health need, there was a science-based intervention, meaning nutrition, a nutrition response to HIV, and there was a diverse partnership that, that formed out of this response that included community members, um, the healthcare community, uh, the government, private and public funding. And I think by, by remembering these three key ingredients to this successful coalition, we can um, see how we, how we do well and where we fall short in some of our other efforts here uh, more recently. So for, to provide a little bit of background on when uh, I'll be using the term medically tailored meals and medically tailored nutrition, I think this pyramid is a great example of, of, of how we define and talk about medically tailored meals. Uh, in, in our coalition, we really focus on the highest level of this pyramid, and that would be the people that have the most significant chronic health conditions, uh, such as congestive heart failure, diabetes, HIV, cancer, and, and then some of the other um, food and nutrition interventions, you'll find more a, a prevention side on the bottom of the pyramid. But, but we use this to really show how we distinguish ourselves um, from, from other types of food security intervention. And this definition of medically tailored meals, I think, is, is a really good example for us to, to help um, further illustrate what we're talking about when we talk about our food as medicine movement and medically tailored nutrition. At Project Open Hand and for most of our CalFEMIC partners, we really focus on clients that have multiple chronic health conditions. And, and actually, they come into our program via a medical referral from providers. So it's a little different than, than just um, uh, a, an open door that we can serve everyone. We actually have a medical process um, uh, with referral and assessment, and then we, we put clients on, on, um, on an intervention that's appropriate for their, their specific health needs. Uh, to define a little bit about who the, the coalition is throughout the state of California, um, we're six agencies. We're growing right now. We have two more agencies that will be joining us shortly. We, um, we represent about 48% of the population, and collectively throughout our agencies, we've, we've had over 150 years service um, for really addressing nutrition security for low-income people, again, with multiple chronic health conditions. And during COVID-19, we found it was really necessary for us to talk about um, our, our, our efforts in a little bit of a different way. There was a lot of um, attention, and rightfully so, on the increased food insecurity due to vulnerable adults now sheltering in place and not having access to groceries or food or, or meal sites or, what, 
or um, or there are various ways of um, of um, receiving food. But we really think it's important to to talk about nutrition security because for our most vulnerable people in our community, just having access to to some form of food does not meet their particular health needs. So we talk a lot about nutrition security, and we think that that's an important topic that people in the aging service space and, and people with chronic health conditions need to focus more on going forward. In California, these are the agencies that are represented as part of the Food is Medicine Coalition. Again, most of us are also part of the national group. There might be a, a food is medicine partner in your community. Um, we can tell you how to, how to locate them sooner or, or in a little bit. And some of the major efforts we have underway right now, um, we have a large four-year uh, four study working with congestive heart failure where we will have 1,000 people that have uh, with, with serious congestive heart failure that had been hospitalized um, that, that are receiving a medically tailored meal program. And, and then we also have several partnerships with um, different healthcare providers and health insurance companies looking at similar pilots to, to really look at quality of life and cost reduction for people with complex chronic health issues. Collectively, our, our coalition here in California, we do 75,000 meals per week, um, 16,000 clients, a very diverse population of who we are serving. And the, um, again, since the purpose of this presentation was not to talk about the research related to medically tailored nutrition, um, we do have a number of peer-reviewed studies that have been posted on our website, and we can make that uh, available to, to, to you. Um, working in a coalition th throughout the country, we share our research. We all have different research partners we work with, and having access to research in different parts of the country really helps us build our case for nutrition security and medically tailored meals, and, um, and, and we know that, that the healthcare payers are really interested in this data. So with um, the importance of our partnerships uh, throughout the state of California and, and nationally, um, we, we recognize the need to actually form as a coalition. We, we had relationships with each other, but, but really some of the, the larger research partners and payers really needed a centralized uh, body to, to work with because they really don't, a, a lot of healthcare doesn't recognize a, a geographical restriction that, we, that we've been used to. So we knew that it was important for us to form, and, and we actually have this coalition now within the state of California that, that has really helped us, particularly during COVID-19, get the word out about what we are doing and the importance of nutrition security, not just food insecurity or food security. We work closely with the Department of Healthcare Services, uh, the Department of Aging on the master plan. We're inserting ourselves into, um, into the conversation where where it was a conversation um, around food security, it, hopefully it's now a conversation around nutrition security. Um, we formed a medical advisory council, which I think is a really important part of our partnership, that uh, made up of physicians, uh, registered dietitians, healthcare workers throughout the state that, that can provide credence to the research that's coming out. They can help advise on our outcome measures and on our interventions. And, and really uh, provide a, a, an expert voice for the, the advocacy that we're working on. Uh, we've had great partnerships with, um, with uh, hospitals, um, whoops, sorry, uh, with hospitals and clinics, other nonprofit organizations. Food banks are always an important partner with us uh, within that continuum, and, and a number of um, community clinics have, have really um, jumped in and, and helped us in our advocacy efforts. So some of our lessons learned in my last 30 seconds is um, we, we really want to, to continue the message around nutrition security. We want to, we, we want to work with uh, researchers and partners on how to assess nutrition security. There's actually a real challenge with that. We, we can have people come into our facility and, and with a food security screen, they can screen that they are food secure, but we know they don't have what they need to maintain their optimal health. So um, we look forward to working with our partners on that going forward. I'm happy to address any of your questions um, in the chat here or refer you to our research um, clearinghouse on, 
on part of the California Food and Medicine website. Thank you.